Look at a hologram and you see something really remarkable. The spatial information of a three-dimensional object is contained in a single photograph, but to make such a hologram is not so simple. You have to pack a joule of light into five nanoseconds discharged from a ruby laser. But a point source hologram can be used to obtain the same information and transfer it to a computer. Higher order diffraction images are separated from their central zero order by distances that are proportional to the distance of a source of illumination to a diffraction grating. This is a method to take range readings using primary objective gratings. I received the basic method patent in 1987 and made a demonstration with a simple embossed plastic crosshatch grating. A 1997 embodiment called Molly uses a holographic chirp frequency grating. It is calibrated with a target bar used for the Metris model maker triangulation 3D scanner. Molly was built for live portraiture using two localizers, one worn by the subject. The dual Polhemus magnetic wave localizers are aligned by a procedure that registers the sides of a rectangular solid that is hand positioned. The magnetic wave method was chosen for freedom of movement and immunity to sightline and seclusions. Custom software written in Pascal by David Holden and Richard Monkhouse of Costronics Electronics in London combines two localization receivers into a single coordinate system and ships the combined localization values out to the model maker software via an RS-232 serial port, just as if a single localizer was being used. Many adjustment parameters are offered on the dashboard of the Polhemus to model maker interface. The dual channel method allows the user to scan an object, acquire one profile strip, and then turn the surface to see it from an alternative vantage point. As the scan progresses, the profile strips appear in sequence in the model maker active scan window. Multiple scans allow for seeing around foreground occlusions. Laser light intensity is rated at a half a milliwatt, which is considered eye safe. Or perhaps I'm blind to the danger. The profiles look like those found in triangulation, but they differ in a couple of respects. They have no perspective for shortening, and the illumination stripe is collimated so that it's a uniform width no matter what depth is being probed. I've scanned my face many times for Mount Rushmore. Actually, I'm hoping to win the Cyrano's competition for the most impressive probesis as measured empirically on a research grant. Speaking of which, in 2006, the NSF funded the development of a microscope based on this method. A diffraction grating is seen here in profile seven centimeters from a target surface, which is an eighth of an inch stair step. Here's the zero order or triangulation image. If the grating is rotated, then the zero order, which is a mirror reflection, is moved out of the way and the holographic magnification image comes into view. It's magnified over the triangulation image by about 10 to 1 and is telecentric. Here's what I'm working on now. This part costs nothing. <laughs> this part costs five dollars. That's it. That's it. Well, this part here. <laughs> you have to get the iPhone version. Oh, and then here's how here's how you defeat the ambient illumination. Okay. So you always get ambient illumination. Here's how it looks from the sensor's point of view. Uh, there are two dimensions that are encoded in one line, which is uh, distance, which is the width of the spectral line, and the uh, vertical orientation is one of the two planar dimensions. The other dimension on this pad can be determined by the horizontal displacement, although in an embodiment that I figure, it'll use a linear scanner and a pair of these. 